welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you can hear me because I have both lawn, like washer dryer going and my house is super echoey. So let's hope this sound works and I don't blow this entire video. So today's video, I wanted to do what basically 2020 trend. I don't know if you've noticed, if you look a lot on like recommendations, everyone wants the mafia mob slash kidnapping type book. Like last year, 2019 was definitely the bully dark high school theme. This year, it's definitely going into the mob boss kind of theme. And that's all because of a, I mean, it's my guess, but I would say it's all because of a movie on Netflix. You may have heard of it, may have watched it. 365 days, of course, that's what I'm talking about. Have I seen it? Yeah, of course I've seen it. I've actually seen it twice. So anyway, let's get into these books. So I wanted to do a review on a specific book, Beautifully Cruel, which I will do, but I didn't want to just do a review. I wanted to give some other books suggestions, you know? So when I was looking into other mafia books that I've read, I thought I would have a long list. Come to find out, I haven't read a ton at all, which I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I enjoy them. I don't know why I wasn't I'm not more drawn to them. So that's gonna be my goal of this year is to read a little bit more of those but I honestly only had enough to compile probably two videos worth, roughly. So the first book I wanted to talk about is Cole by Tijan, and I hope I say, I'm saying her name right. I can't say anyone's name, so bear with me. But this is a good solid book. I'd give it like a three out of five on my scale. It wasn't as dark as a lot in the majority of the mob bosses books go. I think it comes off a little darker, especially when you see the cover. Let's pop that back up here again. When you look at the cover, it feels like it would be a little darker. So it's not heavily dark in that sense. And actually Cole himself is not a very intimidating, like maybe intimidating is not a right word. He's not a heavily dominant, it's not a right word. I guess dark, I don't wanna keep using the word dark, but just dominating isn't right. And I'll use dark because I can't think of another adjective. He's not heavily dark as a lot of the, or cold cold or like standoffish as a lot of the other ones. He's actually probably the lightest mafia boss I've ever read about, but it's still, it's a good story. It's about Addison who just lost her husband. That's not a spoiler, it's, you'll know right away, who just lost her husband tragically and she's living in the house, the house that they share together and her friends think she needs a change and they're like, oh, there's an opening at this really fancy apartment complex. I think you should move in. Just to change it up, you need to do something spontaneous. So she moves into this really nice building and her neighbor is Cole, who she meets, and he actually owns the building. And then come to find out he's the leader of the mob and they essentially start off with a friends with benefits kind of relationship. And then, you know, like him protect, wants to protect her, you know, kind of typical of what you would expect from a mob boss story. And it just develops. So I, yeah, I would recommend it. It's not gonna, if you want something that is a darker feel for a mob boss, I wouldn't recommend this one in that sense. But if you're like, give me, I want, you know, I want that theme, but it doesn't have to be too dark. Just give me the theme of it. I, I fully recommend it and it is a solid read. You can't go wrong. So the second book I wanna talk about is Sparrow by LJ Shen. And of course I could not go a video without bringing up Lei Shen. I don't mean to every video. Let me just point that out there. She also just writes a lot of different dynamic type stories. So it keeps fitting into my bubbles, but I swear this will not be like every single video, a praise to LJ Shen. I mean, there are some that I'm not as crazy about. We just haven't got there yet. So Sparrow is an arranged marriage slash mob boss story. So you have to be aware of it because there is a trigger and I think you have a right to know if you really don't want to know about it fast forward a couple of seconds but I think you might want to know about this specific trigger and that's cheating I know we all hate that I hate it I don't read books with cheating now granted I read this one before that became a thing for me and it's true if I haven't read it and I discovered that now would I pass on it no because it's it's still Lei Shen and she's my favorite and that's always like my exception author but if it was from anybody else I would honestly probably pass because I hate cheating so much but be the part that makes it sorry I thought someone was home the part that makes it a little like I don't want to say okay but more acceptable is that it's early and because it's an arranged marriage story 
then so my nose itches. I'm trying not to like pick my nose on video. Because it's an arranged marriage, then you know like they have to grow to even like each other, let alone fall in love. And when this cheating happens, yes, they're married, but they still very much hate each other, even though he feels some guilt when it happens. But does it take the sting away? Maybe a little. Does it still bother you? Probably, yeah. But I would recommend this book. I do like it. It's not one of my favorites of hers. Again, another, I'm trying not to always give books three out of five, but I just feel like that is a solid number because it's not the greatest. When you get to those fours and fives, that's when you're really moved by a book, but then two, one and two, it's like, it was, that's bad. So I feel like three is such a good solid number for just a lot of books. And it is, it is a really solid book. I did like it. I will read it again. Just be aware of that little bit of trigger. It does happen, it happens early. But I think by the end of the book, you'll be happy with it because there is, you get that groveling. So, which we all need at the end of the day. So the third book I want to recommend that I'm actually not going to get in too much detail about this specific book, more so the series, because the, this book, I think I'll talk more about specifically in the dark high school bully category, because it goes into both. And that's Nero by Sarah Brienne, which I also just realized those last three books, each one of the book titles is named after one of the characters. Like, I know that happens a lot, but it's like, coincidentally, it's because we're in the category of mob boss, like Cole, hmm, Sparrow, that's her name, and Nero, that, funny. Anyway, but that's not for this book. So Nero is a high school romance slash bully book. The whole series is not, does not take place during that time span. There's, there's like nine books, there's a lot. I'll be honest, I haven't read the whole series. I loved Nero, but then after that came Vincent, and this is, but now the books I, I believe are on Kindle Unlimited. If I discovered them now, I'd probably just say what the heck and read them, but they cost money when I found it, and I saw how bad the reviews, no offense to Sarah Brienne, but the reviews from book two to book whenever it was at the time were so bad, I just couldn't get myself to purchase them. So now that they become Kindle Unlimited, again, don't know how long, so they might not be by the time you see this. I've only now and then since read Lucas because everyone loved Lucas. And so I'm like, I gotta read that one. I skipped Vincent and went Nero, Vincent, Chloe, which don't read Chloe, I will say that. That is a filler. It's free, so it doesn't really hurt and you lose your time, I guess, but it's free, but now it's a little easier of a decision if you have Kindle Unlimited. But Chloe is kind of a useless book from what everyone has said. It's a filler between what happened from the first book, from the first two, and then just nothing. And then it kind of, so it kind of essentially goes Nero, Vincent, Chloe, Lucas, and then everything on that I just probably have no interest in investing in going and reading at this point. I'm not as drawn into the series, but the series is about a moth, the Italian mafia family. Nero's father. <laughs> is the leader of the mafia and it's his family and then each character in the book is either like his brother who's lucas and he's more involved in planning on taking over for their father and then just other side characters get books but i loved nero that was very good you don't get heavily mafia from that book you definitely get some because that's part of the of why those two even come together nero and l the main characters is because of something that happens with the mafia and she's kind of a witness to it. So there is some talk of mafia in that one, but it's just not as heavy because they are teenagers. I believe as you get more into the series, it will get probably deeper with mafia like Lucas because he's trying to become part like the leader of and take over for his father. There is more so of that, of that presence in that book. And I'm sure with the other ones, it will be based on what the, who the characters are and where they stand in the mafia based off reading Nero and Lucas. I'm like, okay, that one will probably have more of that feel to it. So I, it's hard to say if I would recommend the series. I would recommend Nero 100%. Lucas was good, not great. There are no, tr no triggers really for any of them. I'll just put that out there. You're safe there. But as far as the series as a whole, it will be up to you. It is free on Kindle Unlimited right now. If you wanted to say, what the heck, there's a lot of them, so you're committing for a good amount. It's not completed, but they're all standalones, so to say, so it's fully up to you. Okay, and the final book I wanna to talk today, and this is a full review, 
is Beautifully Cruel by, here we go, <laughs> by JT Gessinger. Gessinger, yeah, we'll roll with that. Gessinger, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But this book, oh my God, guys, probably top five, probably even top three, let's be the real, top three books of 2020. It was so good, so unexpected. I don't know what drew me, oh no, I know what drew me to read, to read it. I saved it in one of my book groups on Facebook. People kept suggesting it, just saying, thank you for suggesting this, you gotta read it. It just kept getting thrown in my face. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just do it. And coincidentally, I started reading this the same day I watched 365 for the first time. And there are some parallels. This just had a similar feel where like, in this, this book, she only has a, she want, has a month to be with him, where the other is 365. Both characters' physical features are described similar to the same, to the ones in 365. So I was picturing those. I mean, then again, I'm gonna probably also picture Mikel Maroney as a lot of my, he's kind of like my inspiration for a lot of books. Even if they're like, they're blonde with long hair, I'm still picturing him. Tell me I'm not the only one who does that. But anyway, so this book, well, I put it in the mm, Hall of Fame, that's tough. I don't know, hold off on the Hall of Fame, but it's definitely a five-star read. 100%, no triggers, no cheating, good to go, you jump right into it. And will I read again in one hunt? Yeah, definitely. So this book is about lame and true, and true is a typical girl working at the diner, trying to make ends meet, pay for school, yada, yada, yada. And she sees this guy come in for about a year, almost every day, and sits in her section of where she serves. And he's the tall, dark, and handsome, has this aura, aura, technically, aura of just dark and like standoffish tattoos. And he always has to sit in her section, will only be requested to sit with her, by her. And that's Liam. And he is the leader of the, Irish, right? Yes. The leader of the Irish mob. Does, she doesn't know that, but just everyone, all she knows is everyone's very afraid of him. Her coworker, her boss, everyone is very hesitant about him, but she has no idea why. Finally gets the courage to talk to him. They hit it off, but he's very much so like, I need to, I can't be near you. I need to go away because his plan was to see her one last time and then disappear because it's just not safe. But then something happens where he needs to come and help her. And now they're kind of, little more bonded and stuck with each other and ultimately they decide on let's do a 28 day cleanse I guess as you would say of each other to get the get them out of each other's system because we know that just never works but that was their approach and through the whole process it's a lot of like he keeps her out of the loop of a lot of things doesn't tell her a lot of details he's very mysterious and she's just trying to get through of not falling in love with him. And it's really not till the end of the book we get more details about Liam's life. I will do some spoilers because I do like the twists that happen in this book. They're not anything extreme. They're what I call my perfect twists. So would I recommend the book 100%? I think I've already said that. I'm gonna say it again. You should totally read it. Like I said, top three of 2020. It's has been worth the hype 100%, which is scary to do. Never fully trust hype ever, but this worked into the hype. And I do want to talk some spoilers, so if you don't want to hear any spoilers at all, I'm not gonna edit them or how, like the level, no, I'm just gonna actually flat out say them. So if you don't wanna hear anything, this is where you clock out and I'll see you next time in my next video. But if you wanna hear some spoilers, stay okay. in. Okay, so the first spoiler would be definitely the twin brother, Killian, right, you'd say Killian? I definitely did not see that coming. That was a fun little like, that was a fun little tidbit, especially because his book is next and I'm really excited for that. I liked his character, the, he seems more unattainable than Liam did. Liam still did, did have his, like it's funny that they called this book beautifully cruel because I didn't particularly find him cruel. He was just more standoffish and more of like a wall in front of him where Killian has the charming personality, but still like, I'm unattainable, but I'm super charming. So that's gonna be a really good book. I'm excited for that one. And then the other twist, obviously, and I really didn't see this one coming, is that he's not actually in the mob. I'm like, wait, what? He's like in the kind of FBI slash witness protection, but not kind of, 
I didn't, I couldn't fully grasp his title there, but that they're, he's not the mob boss. He's undercover as a mob boss. And I'm like, oh, that's a totally didn't see that coming. You don't expect that from a mob book to find out that the hero is actually not in the mob. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed that a little bit. That because who would put those two and two together. But that is it for today's video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed and got some good recommendations out of it. So keep on reading and I will see you in my next video. Bye.